to him. Us, yes, not him. And it happens to him. And he draws out the implication. You're not above your master. If you would be my disciple, you will take up your cross and get on the Calvary road and follow me. There's not another road of ministry. Martyrs are not an accident. Revelation 6, 11, when they cried out from under the altar, how long, how long until you judge our blood and avenge us? The word comes back, rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Rest a little longer. There's some more of you planned. Till the number is complete. And some are in this room. May God give you strength. May God give you strength. Might be a sniper who doesn't like your church. Might be a bomber who doesn't like where you're headed on the airplane. Just might be a mob. Might take you down in Yemen after 30 years in a hospital there, loving people. Might take you down with Martin Burnham in the Philippines. Might take you down with Graham Staines in India. It won't be an accident. It will be a design to break open the world. We keep running like we are in the American evangelical church from suffering. The Lord will reject us and get it done with 10,000 Korean missionaries. The South Korean church in the last 10 years has gone from, I'm going to do ballpark numbers now, about 2,500 missionaries to 10,000 cross-cultural missionaries, putting to shame us dying Westerners who are so infatuated with our securities and our ease. Now, lest you think we put our martyrdom too close together with Christ's witness martyrdom, listen to this amazing sentence from Colossians 1.24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. Brothers, we are called in our sufferings to complete the afflictions of Jesus. You really need to ponder that. That's a design for the ingathering and the upbuilding of the church of the living Christ. And it does not mean you atone for anybody's sins or that his atoning death was in any way deficient. It means this, I believe. The sufferings of Jesus acted out by him in fully sufficient atoning worth are meant to be displayed, portrayed, offered through the sufferings of his body on earth. It's a design, which is why I abominate the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. Not just because it gets a few things wrong. It destroys the message of the cross, which is designed to come through a suffering church. So, the second point is that it is a divine plan or a divine design that this gospel-spreading, church-planting purpose triumph through the suffering of his people, especially his ministers and missionaries. Point number three. The position we are now in at the beginning of the 21st century is one that cries out for tremendous missionary effort 
and tremendous missionary sacrifice. Patrick Johnstone, in Operation World, I saw a stack of them back there. If there are any left, you should probably run right now to get it. But they're very inexpensive. You can get them anytime on the web. And they are among the most important books. It is among the most important books in my library. I have a little prayer nook in my study. And there are a few books on the shelf right here beside that. And that's one of them. Not merely because I want to pray, but because I am wired to forget the world. And Patrick Johnstone has done all of us such a tremendous favor to keep our hearts alive for the unreached peoples of the world. Well, he said that in the 1990s, for the first time in history, we were able to get a reasonably complete listing of the peoples in the world, ethno-linguistically. He estimates 12,000 of them. And he says 3,500 have, on average, 1.2% Christians. That's 20 million Christians out of about 1.7 billion people using the broadest definition of Christian and including expatriates. Most of these 3,500 most unreached peoples stretch through the 1040 window from West Africa and North Africa right on across to Japan. And most of them don't want you to come. In fact, they are openly, most of them, hostile to your coming. They don't know what they need. They are blind. Is that going to make a difference to you? Didn't make a difference to God when he saved you that you were blind. When Adnarm Judson went to Burma in July of 1813, it was a hostile, utterly unreached place. William Carey had said to Judson, cross the Bay of Bengal, don't go there. It's useless. All the missionaries that went there either died or quit. There were no missionaries there when Judson got there. Fierce war with Siam. Anarchic despotism, enemy raids continually, constant rebellion, no religious toleration. And Judson, hearing that there was a boat in the harbor heading for Rangoon, looked at his 23-year-old bride of 17 months and said, will you go with me? And Anne did. 38 years he ministered there till he died when he was 61. Went home once after 33 years, not by choice, but to accompany his sick wife. He was a seed that fell into the ground and died over and over. And the fruit God gave is celebrated today even in scholarly works like Barrett's World Christian Encyclopedia, which says the largest Christian force in Burma is the Burma Baptist Convention, which owes its origin to the pioneering activity of the American Baptist missionary Adnaram Judson. He was a Baptist when he went there in 1813 because although he had come out, as a congregationalist on the 114-day voyage, his mind was changed. And William Ward, the partner of William Carey, baptized him and Anne on September 6, 1812, there near Calcutta. And today, Patrick Johnstone estimates that in Myanmar, the new name for Burma, in Myanmar, the Baptist Convention has about 3,700 congregations with 617,000 Members and 1.9 million affiliates, the fruit of this dead seed. Of course, there were others, and they died too. 
The church today in me 